Hi, pipe smokers. It's Paul the Pipe Guy live from Rochester, New York. And guess what time it is? It is time for Thirsty Thursday. So grab a bowl, grab your favorite beverage, whatever you want. I have my bush beer, which I always like, uh, standing by. And uh, I did get a, a couple of things today. Uh, I got out of work at 4 o'clock, and um, I uh, went out and sitting on the seat, uh, the driver's seat of my truck, was a package. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what this could be. And uh, so I opened it up, and uh, it's a beautiful plaque that commemorates my son's memory, Michael Gilson, there he is. I know it's kind of you can see him. He had a he was a beautiful boy and uh, gone way too soon. And it says Tears in Heaven, Eric Clapton, uh, Michael J. Gilson, uh, five seven nineteen ninety to uh, two twenty two of twenty twenty one. And uh, when I saw that beautiful smile, uh, I burst into tears and I cried all the way home and uh, just missed him so much. Um, five weeks ago, he was sitting here right next to me, uh, smoking this beautiful Peterson uh, pipe and XL24, I think it is. I can't remember what the bowl number is, but and I can't see it. Um, no, it's a 606. Uh, that was the last pipe he ever smoked, and that was five weeks ago, sitting right next to me. So, um, anyway, so I bawled my eyes out for about uh, an hour and a half or so, and uh, uh, got home and uh, <clears throat> got into the mailbox, and uh, I received my first batch of plug tobacco. It's called Spark plug. And uh, if I can read this to you, um, uh, spark plug, spark plug, deep and dark, uh, powerful yet refined. Uh, the smoky, leathery uh, backdrop of Latika is uh, I'm sorry, it's it's hard to read this. It's layered with an almost... Uh, let me get my flashlight, gosh. Ah. is layered uh, with fine Virginians added for depth and subtle sweetness, the classic roadsters that inspired its creation. Spark Plug has an alluring charm that invites you to rev it up, take it for long drives in the country, slice it thick or thin, it will never leave you stranded. And uh, it says for sale in the U.S. only, but it's got a British kind of look to it. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to open up this can of plug tobacco, and I spent about four hours watching videos on this, and... It comes in a tin, a can, and there we go. We peeled the top off of it, and let's see what we have here. If I can get the paper out. Ah, yes, here we go. My God, they package this stuff unbelievably. Oh, and there it is. A plug. Hmm. Interesting smell. It does smell kind of like uh, if you were in a uh, roadster shop or a hot rod shop. Not the smell of gasoline or anything like that, but let me try to digest this for a second. The smell is very strong. It 
kind of smells like an old car. Uh, so what we're going to do is, uh, my son Michael was always willing to try new things. So the last pipe that he smoked in his life, sitting right next to me, was this. So I'm going to prepare this plug, fill this pipe, and we'll be right back. And uh, then uh, I'll do another video on this, on actually how to prepare plug tobacco. Uh, so I don't know how this is going to taste. We'll see. Uh, we'll be right back. Uh, the other pipe I have is my other son's, Polly Jr. Yeah, it's an XL24. He got so lucky getting this pipe. Um, I bought it for him. Uh, and when I say lucky, they had a special where you pick, you know, whether you wanted a smooth bowl, rusticated, uh, sandblasted, and if you wanted a curved stem or a straight stem, and this is what he got in. And out of the five that I got from that deal, this is the best one. And, of course, what do you guys think I have in this pipe? My new go-to favorite, vanilla custard. Yes. So, let me load this bowl up uh, with this beautiful spark plug. We'll give it a try. What do you think, guys? I'll be right back. All right, so we're back, and uh, we have this Peterson loaded up with spark plug, plug tobacco. And if my son Michael were here, he'd be like, yeah, I want to try that. So let's uh, light it up in the last pipe he ever smoked. Plug tobacco is actually pretty damp, so I've never tried it before. Plug tobacco. Mm. Definitely very strong and rich. But, uh, It's good. I like it. Mm. So, actually what I did is I overfilled the bowl with the bigger chunks. You're supposed to put the bigger chunks towards the bottom of the bowl and then put really fine chunks towards the top. So it really doesn't want to stay lit. This is my first time ever smoking plug tobacco. But, Let me tell you something. You order that stuff and you won't be disappointed. It's strong. <clears throat> mm. Oh, it's good. It's got almost like a Definitely very strong, full flavored, but smooth all at the same time. And it does have hmm, just, I don't know, it reminds me of something very old. Not bad, old, but just. Hmm. Yeah, this is good stuff.
my first attempt at smoking plug tobacco isn't going so super great, but on the same time, getting it going. Something I'll have to work on. Yeah. It's great tobacco, though. Leaves you with a great aftertaste. Mm. There we go. Ah, very good. And I don't know if you can get this in the UK. Uh, it says for sale in the United States only. So, spark plug. You want to try that out. Oh, my God. It's really good. We're going to let this bowl rest here for a moment. Ah, yeah. So, how's everybody's week going? It's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. And then I have the weekend off. It's beautiful out today. It's like 72 degrees, sunny. Uh, current time right now is 6.02, two minutes after the hour. So, which means, and uh, for my friends across the pond in the UK, it's 10.02. Hmm. This is really good. This has like... A very smoky taste to it. Ah, it's good. It's really good. It's kind of like the... I don't know what they did with this stuff, but whatever they did with it, I don't know if they smoked it, the leaves or whatever, but it's like really good. I like this. Uh, and like I said, it's my first time smoking plug tobacco. A lot of you uh, guys and gals that are veterans at smoking pl pipe uh, plug tobacco are probably laughing at me saying, you should have done this, you should have done that, you know. But uh, I filled it up with the bigger pieces, didn't, ran out of room. Supposed to put tiny chopped up pieces on the top so it gets everything going but and then some people say after you chop up your plug tobacco <clears throat> to let it sit for like a half hour 45 minutes and dry out a little bit Definitely would be an all day smoke. Mm. Ah, so good. Oh, my God. I can't put it down. Uh, it doesn't burn really hot either, surprisingly. So the second pipe, my son's XL24, I think I said it was. I can't remember. I'm not turning it upside down. Ah, uh, yes, and it has my two go-to pipe tobacco right now. This beautiful vanilla custard. Hmm. Vanilla custard will never let you down. Oh, yeah. So I'm starting to already get... Uh, we have a small family business, as uh, some of you might know in my past videos. We do the concrete landscape curbing, so it separates the grass from the landscaping and your flower beds and so forth been doing it 20 years now and used to be a full-time thing 
but you know now it's just a part-time thing I'm getting older I'm 56 years old so and I have a full-time job and I've had uh, when I was younger in my 30s I had a full-time job working 55 hours a week plus I was in the fire department volunteer plus I was doing 40 hours with my business and uh, now I kind of take things in stride. So if I make a little bit of money during the summer doing this concrete landscape edging, that's okay. I don't need to get rich anymore. I'm past all that. Well, don't get me wrong, I like to earn money. And I like to work hard. I do work hard. Oh, this stuff is so good. Oh, vanilla custard. Mm hmm But I've worked so hard ever since I was like seven years old. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, I, I had a little lawn mowing business and so forth when I was seven. Who would let their seven-year-old hop on a riding lawnmower these days? Not too many people would. But back in the early 70s... Uh, mid 70s things were different and uh, when I turned 12 I got a full time paper route, uh, morning paper route so I was up every morning at 4.30 uh, and uh, delivered my newspapers come home mom would always have, mom would always have breakfast ready our lunch is packed for school. And if anybody's ever delivered newspapers, your hands get black from the newsprint. And I remember my mom saying every morning when I came home to go up to take a shower and get ready for school and have breakfast, she'd be like, don't touch the walls. You're going to get fingerprints all over them. <laughs> A lot of things my mom said. She's a great lady. Still resonate in my mind. Um, one of them is, uh, and I do love gardening. And so uh, when you garden, obviously you have to weed, pull the weeds out. One of the things that still resonates, and I'm 56 years old. I haven't weeded my mom's flower beds or the garden in 40 years, all right? But one of the things she always said resonates every time I go out and pull weeds. And it's like, don't just pull the tops off. Reach down to the very bottom where the dirt is and make sure you get the roots out too. Otherwise, they'll just grow back. And I think about that every time I pluck weeds. I can hear my mother's voice. Saying that. <laughs> Isn't it funny how uh, things get instilled in us? That's a good thing. I had a great childhood growing up. My mom was a stay-at-home mom. My father worked, uh, well, my adopted father, who, when she married, uh, when he married my mom, adopted all four of us kids. Very brave thing to do. He had a good job at Xerox, being in the service end, and he was a manager and so he made 
good money, but he had a prior family before ours with four kids, so if he made $47,000 a year back in the 70s, which was a lot of money back then, he was paying $12,000 a year in child support and alimony, but we made it work. And, uh, you know, they own the family home. Uh, we always ate well. Always had clothes. When I turned 12, I told my mom, you're not buying me any more clothes. You're not buying me any more shoes or anything like that. And she's like, why? The, you know, I don't understand. It's back to school time. Uh, let's go school shopping. Nah, mom. I got my own money. I have a job. I'll pay for it. I knew by the time that my stay-at-home mom and hard-working father, even though I made good money, uh, I knew I knew where it was going, and. Uh, They had a mortgage, bills to pay, lots of child support, and lots of alimony. And so when I started earning money, and I was earning about $100 a week back in the late 70s, early 80s, which for a part-time job for a young lad was pretty good money. So I ended up buying all my own school clothes and supplies and everything. So this is our... Thirsty Thursday. Anyway, so I hope you liked it. Have a great night. Happy pipe smoking, pipe smokers. Paul the Pipe Guy, live from Rochester, New York, over and out.